Oh man, I've still got this Blake Rudis character trolling me. This guy from F64. I did two videos with him and now he's just pestering me because I feel like I kind of won that Photoshop craps game that we did. You know, he was all serious, but you know, I brought some light-hearted entertainment to it. Made it watchable. He actually got a few views on that video. Uh, but basically, he's still trolling me, saying I can do better than you can do in Photoshop. So what I've decided to do is get a couple of images that, to be honest, I'm struggling with. There's a couple of little things that I'd like to do with these two images that I don't really know how to do. He reckons he can just take any kind of blind challenge. He hasn't seen these images. He doesn't know what I want to do with them. So let's see if I can just throw this challenge at him and he can do this edit that I honestly can't figure out how to do. So are you ready, Blake? Yeah. Right, so here's the first image. What do you think of that? I think it's good, but I don't know. Like, the only thing I really like about it, I think, is Amanda there, but, you know. It's a bit harsh, but uh, understandable. Right, so what it, the reason why I've shown you this image and what I want you to do, and we'll, we'll see if you can rise to the challenge, like, okay. very doubtful, um, is... You see that red jacket of Amanda's there. So what I wanted to do when I was editing this is I wanted to make a selection of the jacket based on the color red so that I could kind of boost the contrast, the, the saturation, and maybe tweak the color a little bit. I, I thought maybe even I would try and change the color from red to yellow. So I ended up using the quick selection tool, which did an okay job, but if you look at her hood, and just under her lovely bum there, there's a bit of spillage, you know, where I, I did a pretty shabby job of the masking. And, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be a portfolio image, so I didn't really bother to, to clean it up. But, you know, I really should have done a better job. And I figured if you had a quick way of just selecting the colour red, and that would then make a perfect cutout of that jacket, that would be better than what I did. I, I, almost anything would be better than what you did <laughs> but um w one of the things that i'm you're, you're always making me zoom in on amanda's butt for some reason you did this in the milky way course to me too so yeah. looks like she had a little accident on that rock well i'm you know she might have drunk a little bit too much coffee or maybe a, a, a gluten shot you know who mm. knows what it could have been <laughs> what are you laughing at that's a real thing like <laughs> sorry i didn't i didn't know yeah, it's not. I feel I feel bad for anyone with that. Anyway, there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, and if you ask any Photoshop instructor, everyone's going to tell you to do it a different way, and they've all got their own techniques. But this is the way that I think is the easiest, especially for a color like this with red, where you don't have a whole lot of red in the rest of the image. If we look at the rest of the photo, there might be a little bit of an like inkling of red in the mountains and in the reflection here, but predominantly it's going to be in her coat, right? Yeah. So we're going to go to select. And then here there's this thing called color range. And in this, this might actually be set to sampled colors or it might be set to whatever you used as your default before. So what you're gonna do is set this to reds. And then you'll see that this is gonna make a really good selection for the color red of her coat while also kind of preserving luminosity a little bit, but we can do some more with that with uh, some blend modes. But look at the, the mountains. They're kind of in there because of the orange that's available and that's okay. So we're gonna press okay on this one. And then I'm gonna make a solid color fill and this solid color fill is going to whatever i have as the foreground color in my palette here and i'm just going to go ahead and you said yellow you want yellow right so we'll yeah. change this to yellow and then here we can change if this is set to hue or the h right here we can change this to any color that we want of the color so let's go with like a bright yellow yeah but you can see the mountains changing in the background too we'll fix that in a second so after I've got that yellow set, it's a very nice bright yellow. It's basically a full-on saturation of yellow, right? So what you would do here to fix that, that mountain stuff going on in the background is if you press Alt or Option on the mask, it'll show you exactly what's contained in that mask. So if we press B for our brush tool, we can change that to the color black and just paint away on these mountains here. And make sure my brush is selected. Make that a little bit smaller. Just brush away anything that was selected in there other than Amanda. And if you want a really easy way to see this, if I double click on this and I change the color overlay to magenta, that will also help show some of the other areas that are contained in that mask over here. You see that? Yeah. Well, that's just to show you where the mask was. Yeah, I get it, but you know. Yeah. So here's the cool part. Once you've got this all set up, it's set up for her coat here. 
you can just double click on this color fill and you can change this color fill to anything. This is like what they did in uh, in uh, The Wizard of Oz. Like this is a horse of a different color kind of thing. You know, they just change the horse. That's pretty cool, actually. You like that? Yeah, that's, that like is what I wanted. Um, Technicolor. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, you know, fair enough. That was that was pretty good. Uh, but it took a bit of time, you know, it took, it took your sweet time. So I would I would give you out of five, I'll give you a three and a half stars out of five for for that little tip there. Just because it took you a bit too long to spit the words out, you know. Right, right. Okay. Well, you know, Gavin, I think I think a lord should actually get more points for that. A lord? Because, what? Yes, a lord, yeah. So I, I, I went online and I bought some land in Scotland. So you can officially call me Lord Blake Rudis. So for the next image... I think I should. I think I should get an extra point for this, and for the next image, every time you refer to me, you refer to me as Lord Blake. Well, that's not going to happen, clearly. But I tell you what: if you get five stars for this next one, five out of five, I'll give you one Lord. You'll, that's all you're getting. Just one. Yeah. Well, well consider yourself I'll, privileged. You know. I'll take what I can get. That way, I at least have you admitting that I'm a Lord. All right. All right. I'm going to the next one. Oh, look at that image. That. That really is probably the best image you've had on your screen in a long time, Blake. Pro probably. So <clears throat> what I often come across in my images when I'm editing is I often enjoy the look of two different white balance settings. So if I have like blue tones like you can see in the river there, that might look really good on one particular white balance setting. But then if there's other colors like those yellows and those oranges, I might really like that from a different white balance setting. So if you switch off the top one, you can see that that layer underneath is a bit cooler. And I love all of that for everything in the image, except for these yellow and orange bushes that you can see in the foreground. For those, I much prefer the warmer colors of that top layer that you just switched on there. So I wondered if there's a way to make a selection based on the, the yellows and the oranges and just blend those in from that warmer exposure on top of that colder exposure. It's the same shot, I just imported it with two different white balance settings. So uh, how would you do that then? Hmm. Well, this is a good one. This is this is a good one. This, this could kind of challenge me. I'm going to show you two different ways that you could approach this one, uh -huh. okay? So the first way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this one is I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to go to color range. And I'm not sure how perfect this one's going to be, but we're going to do it. Go to color range. But did, didn't you just do this on the last one? Isn't this just a repeat of the last one? Well, look at how good the selection is. If you knew how to do this on the last one, you'd know how to do it on this one. <laughs> that's, that's true, actually. We've got our reds here. We could change this to yellows. Yeah. We could change this to reds and see what we're going to get there. So what you can do is you can change this to sampled colors because it looks like it's somewhere between the reds and the yellows, correct? Yeah. So we'll go to sampled colors and let's change this so that we can actually see the image here um, on our background. Let's change this to none. Okay. So then we want to see the selection here, but we want we don't want to see a preview out here so that we can actually select this color. And you see how it just selects a very small sample of that? Yeah. We're also going to press and hold shift and then select this color of yellow over here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then this is the fuzziness slider. They shouldn't have called this fuzziness. They should have called it the blending slider, but they called it fuzziness because the higher the fuzziness, the more, I guess, fuzzy your mask is going to be. Okay. So a softer edge to the selection. A softer edge to the selection. So this is going to be a harder edge right here, but we'll try this because it looks like it has a lot of what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. And we'll press OK. Now that it has a selection, all I need to do is click on the mask, and there you have the best of both worlds. Ooh. So if we Alt or Option click, you can see there's other things that are included in that mask that we might not want in that mask. And here's where I was telling you about that trick of being able to see what's in your mask beyond just pressing Alt or Option here. If you double click on this, right next to or underneath the text there, change the color overlay to magenta, it makes it a little bit easier to brush away your mask because you see the magenta color, which this, if you press alt or option on there, we don't really know what it, what it is that you want to keep, right? Yeah. So we do this, and then if we brush with black on those areas, we brush the things that we don't want in there, 
you're getting close to a lord there. That was okay. that was pretty good. But you said you've got another way of doing that. You said I do, and this would actually happen at the raw level. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to press Control Shift and A to get into a camera roll as a filter. Adobe okay. Camera Roll as a filter. Yeah. Now, typically, I would reserve this for doing this at the raw level, but you can still do it here as well. Okay. So I think kind of what you're saying here is that you want a little bit more color there as well, right? More I know what you're going to do. You're going to use the HSL and you're going to boost the saturation on the yellows, aren't you? No, nope. not at all. That's not what a Lord would do. A Lord <laughs> would come down here to the calibration section. Okay. Oh. And in the calibration section, and, and this is the way I describe it, but you probably won't find any literature on this. So it's all theory. Okay. It's kind of like color theory, but this is Blake's theory of calibration. So your camera is a bare matrix sensor camera, meaning it records red pixels, uh, red receptors, green receptors, and blue receptors. And there's, let's say there's a hundred receptors there. 50 of those receptors are gonna be green, 25 red, 25 blue. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I got a little bit bored there, Blake, because right. you kind of went into like sensor technology, science-y kind of stuff. So I'm just having a stroll, because my, my doctor well, said, if you get bored, just go for a stroll. So I'm just walking now. So ca sorry, carry on. Okay. If you knew this stuff, you wouldn't be in the pinch that you're in. That's why I'm trying to explain it to you, because that's right. what I do. That's what lords do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, in the red primary, you can see the colors that are available in the image in the red primary. See that? Oh, yeah. Just a little bump. Just a little bump in saturation. You yeah. can even alter or um, shift that red color hue to be more on the red side or more on the yellow orange side. And just that simple thing right there, because that's where the red pixels mainly select, you get a much deeper color that you could choose from without having to do any masking. And this could be done at the raw level rather than trying to fix it in Photoshop. The thing is, if I did it at that stage though, it's kind of baked in from that point on. So, you know, I don't know if I would, if I would do that, but I like that you would finish it and then maybe open it in Adobe Camera Raw and then do it. You could, but when it's baked in at the raw level, especially if you m modify the other settings along with it, you can get it dialed in exactly where you want it to be. Those cali don't don't ever overlook the calibration section is what I'm telling you. I guess also if you just kept it as a smart object, you could just reload it back into Adobe Camera Raw and pull that down if you figured it was a little bit too too much. See now you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess I've got to say it then, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Do it. Come on. Lord Rudis, that was five out of five. Thank you. Thank you. But, so I got I got another pri uh, surprise for you here, Gavin. Surprise? Uh, yeah. I don't know about no surprise for you. Uh, hang on, let me just stop my treadmill, because I don't want to fall off. I guess technically you didn't have to call me a lord, because uh, I felt really bad buying land in Scotland and not buying you some too, so you are Lord Gavin Hardcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Blake. You're welcome. I'm really touched. It's it's only it's only a twelve inch by twelve inch plot of land, but it's enough to call yourself a lord. Where is it? In Aberdeenshire. You could have a piece of land next to mine then. I could. We could be neighbors. We could be we could be lord neighbors. Two lords in the same valley. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. All right. Well, that was actually quite good. You know, I, I would go so far as to say that I would use those techniques. Uh, you earned one. Lordship, you you got five out of five, so I'm going to begrudgingly admit you definitely know more about Photoshop than I do. So thanks for that, Blake. You know, it, I have this course called the Zone System Express, and in this course, I have a panel for Photoshop that helps you with your selections. Uh, comes with <sighs> ten hours of education, lots of knowledge, lots of things that could that could help you out here. It goes into selections, it? different color selections. That's actually one of the primary things I talk about. But I would also say that on my site, F64 Academy and F64 Elite, about ninety percent of my subscribers Dude. could probably have taught you this. But you what? can't just, I knew there'd be a catch. You can't just come on my videos and plug your bloody courses. That's, that's just rude. I would never go on one of your videos and plug one of my, I would never, would never do that. In fact, it's a pretty good idea though, actually. Well, I would never ask you to come on my channel and show me how to do selections in Photoshop. So that's not going to happen. Yeah, but what about composition? I mean, I've seen your compositions. Do you go out and shoot with blindfolds on or you just wear a hood or what? 
sometimes, but that's not the point. I do teach my subscribers that it's really important to embrace constructive criticism. So as long as you can come on my channel and be constructive with your critiques, I would I would love to have you there. Yeah, you want, you want me on there to help you with your compositions? Yes. All right. That'd be good. And That'd I, be fun. I promise, unlike you, I'm not going to plug my courses because that's just poor taste, right? I would never, I would never do that. So, all right, well, I'll see you on your channel then, huh? All right. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Bye, Lord Hardcastle. Uh, bye, Lord Rudis. Oh, one last thing before you go. Don't hang up yet, Gavin. Oh, do you, well, you want to know it's going to make this image like 10 times better? Don't. Besides the color. Don't do this. Yeah. Don't. Oh, God. I Adam Gibbs. Sick.